Welcome to this coffee lecture on how to draft a data management plan. My name is Julian de Derke. I'm working at the ETH library as a consultant for research data management. The learning goals for today's coffee lecture are twofold. First, you will know what a data management plan is and gain a general understanding of its purpose and advantages. Second, you know where to find material and support at ETH Zurich to draft and also complete your own data management plan. But first, let's get started with what a data management plan actually is. At the ETH Library, we encourage everyone working in a data-driven research project to think about it as their data following a life cycle uh, throughout their project, starting from the creation of the project proposal, moving on towards collecting, storing, and documenting one's research data, later on processing, analyzing, and also interpreting it, and of course, finally, to publish not only papers, but also data sets and to preserve one's research data. And a data management plan is a brief document that basically describes how you intend to handle research data within that project. Usually, it is drafted in the beginning of a project, so rather up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, while creating also a project proposal, but it's perfectly possible to also still engage with data management planning later on during the project. A DMP is supposed to offer a long-term perspective by outlining how the data will be generated, collected, documented, but also shared or published, and even preserved in the long run. And in that way, a DMP can help to plan and document the life cycle of one's research data, meaning that we can really talk of uh, life cycle management here. Uh, a DMP can, in that way, also facilitate making your data fair. This is really the gold standard of handling research data to make it findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. I won't go into detail now regarding that principle, but it's really good practice for handling one's research data. It's perfectly possible to update such a plan as the project progresses. Our research plans and projects might evolve. We have, might have to adapt to the current situation or need to use other methods. And just uh, in the same way, we might also have to update uh, our research data management practice. And this is perfectly fine also for research funders to update one's DMP later on. One should also keep in mind that key criteria are usually completeness, meaning that all the questions that one finds in a template for a data management plan should be addressed. And the DMP should be plausible, of course, for an outside reader, ideally also a bit beyond your discipline. But how does a DMP actually look like? It's really not necessary to read the entire text on this slide now. It's rather meant for perhaps skinning, skimming through it when it comes to answering the question of what data one will collect, observe, generate, or reuse during one's research project. The researcher here, for example, decided to have a list of data types. And this is very common for answering such a question. Uh, he moves on with some descriptive information on data formats and file types, such as MATLAB and R for code or software, or PDF for text documents, or for example, CSV files for tabular data. And finally, there's some information on the amount of data, which can of course range from the megabyte to the terabyte range. So this is a rather standard example for addressing such a question. Let's have a look at a second example. Um, now addressing the key criterion of completeness. Uh, when you are dealing with a template for a data management plan, you might be facing some questions that don't seem to fit your project quite well. For example, you might think that you're not actually dealing with sensitive data such as personal health data or income related data in the social sciences perhaps. But the main point here is that a statement of what a project does not include can perfectly well complete an open question in the data management plan. For example, one could state that the project does not involve usage of any sensitive data, and therefore no special limitations to data use or reuse are necessary. So the key point here really is, if there's any question that doesn't seem to fit your 
um, your project, you might just plausibly explain why it doesn't fit and why it might not apply to the data you're handling. This is really important in terms of completing a DMP, also for funding applications. It gets more complicated, however, when dealing with strictly confidential research data, as mentioned, such as patient or health-related data, or in social sciences, we could mention personal income data. But this won't be covered during today's coffee lecture. So let's move on to what the key advantages of writing a data management plan are. First, it allows us to address challenges in research data management early on. Uh, we might be facing difficult decisions further down the road as to how to store or manage our research data, which infrastructure or software we are using. So it makes sense to think about those challenges early on and perhaps find solutions uh, right in the beginning of a project instead of losing time later on for that. Second, it allows us to document decisions in research data management, just as we do for research design or methods that we use. It's important to allow traceability of the decisions we took. And this also facilitates um, data validation later on because your DMP could really be considered as part of the metadata that are connected to your project, so to say. Third, a DMP can help to secure funding. The major funding agencies, for example, the Swiss National Science Foundation or also European Commission in the Horizon project require to also submit a data management plan. So engaging with data management planning early on can help in meeting those requirements. Fourth, um, a data management plan can really enhance the findability of one's research data, making it scientable and also reusable. Because in a data management plan, we are also uh, required to think about how we share or publish our data and that can lead to uh, citable data sets, of course, in repositories, which might allow other researchers to find our data more easily, uh, facilitate new collaborations. And just as papers can be citable, citable data sets are, of course, important research output that can help for career recognition. So engaging with data management planning makes us think about how to manage our data as precious research output. Finally, it's of course important for you where to find guidance on data management planning and right, for writing a DMP. There is information available from the Swiss National Science Foundation on open research data, their requirements, and also a frequently asked questions section. You will have all the links available in the slides on the website later on, in case you don't find time opening it now, and probably you won't find time during the lecture now. This is just as a collection. Um, there's also an explanation of the content that's expected in a data management plan. Uh, at ETH Library, we offer guidance for ETH researchers on completing such a DMP for the National Science Foundation. And there is also a fact sheet of the EU Grants Access Office in case you have to comply with requirements in the Horizon Europe project regarding research data management. So this is funder-specific guidance. I would also like to um, emphasize where you can actually find the major information at uh, ETH Zurich. Um, the easiest access point is probably the library website and the page on data management planning, where you can find some overview and information about it, but also additional manuals and fact sheets on writing a data management plan. It can also be accessed via the direct link here, it leads to the same page basically. And on that page, you can find a lot of um, instructions and downloads and templates. Uh, one of them is this funding specific guidance for the Swiss National Science Foundation. It's really tailored to complete a data management plan for the SNSF, includes explanations for each of the questions included in a DMP, also examples from other data management plans and contacts and links that are specific for ETH Zurich. But even if you're not uh, preparing a data management plan for an application to the SNSF, it might perfectly make sense for you to uh, write a data management plan because it's really good practice, we would say, for 
any data-driven research project to engage with data management planning. And for that purpose, we also provide more general guidance for ETH Zurich researchers. Uh, this includes, among others, a blank DMP template that you could download and use for filling in. It includes also instructions and explanations for each of the questions, example answers, depending on the specific uh, data you're dealing with, one or the other might be more relevant for you, contacts and links once again, and also more information on supporting resources and solutions that are specific for ETH Zurich, for example, the storage infrastructure or the contact points that are available. So in summary, we could say that there are guides available. We have a frequently asked questions section and we offer support in terms of training on data management planning. For that, you could either check our library website with the courses that go more into detail with data management planning, or you could also request an individual training for your research group, for example. It's also possible to do Zoom consultations on data management planning and we provide a review of DMPs, for example, if you're planning to submit an application to the SNSF. You can either directly contact me via email or my team at data management at library.ethz.ch, or you can find the information on data management plan and planning as indicated earlier on. Thanks a lot for joining for today's coffee lecture.